What radio, the music you want. With your host, Dee Dan. What a jerk. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. And maybe you can have me. Yes, little old me. At your next event, partying with the people at their best times, I am honored to be a part of your wedding day, your baby's birthday. Oh, just good times, you know, with good people hanging out with you. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of the show. Speaking of parts of the show, today on the program, I have Jordan, the Arkansas Deadpool. He will be in your ears in the next few minutes. So you have that to look forward to. I'm kind of excited to talk to him. All right. uh, This week's shows. Yeah, this week's shows. Due to the novel COVID-19 coronavirus, I have no public shows. I have no private shows. I have podcasts, podcasts, podcasts. So stay tuned to have me in your ears a whole lot more until we get out of this pandemic. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to break out. Get out of this house and go have some fun with the people. (laughs) All right. Speaking of having fun with the people, let's get into it with Jordan, the Arkansas Deadpool. Calling Jordan, the Arkansas Deadpool, now. Hi, the Arkansas Deadpool, please. Oh, sorry. He is not present. He is out doing insanely, insanely wonderful things. Okay, very good. Well, I had other choices. I could have called uh, called you the DP, Mr. Pool, whatever floats my pickle. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> what is oh, a pickle, sir? You know, a pickle. <laughs> well, all right. See, if uh, I, when, if a man I... and a, when, when a man and a woman get together, <laughs> a pickle is born. Okay, hold it right there, mister. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if I can't get the Arkansas Deadpool, I'll settle for you. Who are you? Who am I? My name is Jordan. All right. The River Jordan? Uh, Who were you named after? The River. What is a Jordan? Mm. Give the people a little idea (laughs) of who you are. Obviously, this is Keys Dan with the What Makes You Famous podcast. (laughs) I mean, if I I didn't recognize your voice just in seeing the beauty that comes with it, then I, I shouldn't have even answered the call. Oh, I'm flattered. I do declare. (laughs) <laughs> I love it. You are my hero. <laughs> well, all right then. Uh, you know, uh, as we're recording this in April of 2020, for the people that are listening, you know, years into the future, hundreds of years into the future, this might be the only time capsule that they get. The conversation between myself and you, uh, Mr. Jordan, the Deadpool, the Arkansas Deadpool, you know, uh, tell the people how, how have things been going for you. Well, I mean, for me, honestly, things are things are a lot the same. I, mean, I work from home, so I've been I've been kind of normalized. I mean, I'm not I'm not going out obviously as much when I do. I, I'd love to wear my my Deadpool mask. That'd be so much fun to wear around. But we don't want to get Corona on it. I'll pour some Corona in it, but I don't want the Corona on it. You know, I, you know for me personally, as a 51 year old man, I'm finding you know my 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 mindset. You know, we've gone through this before. I'm thinking. It's just a cold, man. I think we're blowing it way out of proportion. Uh, I'm not sure how old you are, but I can get your perspective on, the, on your feelings. There, are we okay? We we might be having a new strain of a of an old thing, a flu. A hundred years ago, there was a flu pandemic that killed hundreds of thousands as well, and here it is a hundred years later, another flu pandemic is killing a few hundred thousand, not a crazy amount of people, but it's killing some. Uh, you know what are what are your takes on it? How old are you? I am thirty one years old. Okay, and I don't. I I think you know. First of all, I'm angry that it's doing my job. I'm out here trying to get these mercenary contracts, and people just. <laughs> I mean, this virus to kill people, and I'm trying to do my job, but it's doing it for me. So I mean, money's going down the drain with that. 
<laughs> I can see that we're going to be going in and out of character uh, as the Deadpool and as the Jordan. I, you, you, the my fine listeners, will have to decipher uh, uh, which person, which persona he's answering as. Now, you say you work from home. What kind of work are you doing? Um, I'm actually I'm a field engineer for a surgical robotics company. What? All right. See, I never know where these conversations are going to go. Uh, you know, uh, the, the the little 12 year old nerd in me just said robotics. Huh? Yeah. Say more. Speak uh, more, sir. Oh, um, have you heard of the Da Vinci robot? I have not. Um, it's a surgical robotic system. It's not automated. It's completely controlled by a user, by a surgeon. Um, and it's basically an assistance, it's an assistance robot and it has three main components and a, a surgeon will use robotic arms to do minimally invasive surgery. The surgeries that are normally done laparoscopically and that are done in giant gaping holes inside of a, inside of a patient are now minimally invasive using our robotic system. And it will, uh, it will actually make it faster recovery times, less bleeding and a much, much lower death rate. LOL at giant gaping holes, but it sounds like you're you're doing wonderful stuff, man. How involved are you? Are you uh, helping to design these, create these, build these? What is your, what is your area of expertise, Um, Master Jordan? As of now, my area of expertise is just basically a field technician. So I will, I manage, I manage 30, how am I at now? 36 systems in the state of Arkansas. There are 36 different uh, robotic systems in the state. Um, and I manage, maintain, repair, um, software upgrades, hardware upgrades, installations, deinstallations. I'm basically the caretaker for all of the systems in Arkansas. You see, you're telling um, people exactly, uh, you're teaching people what happens when robots take over our jobs. Those robots still need to be maintained. And you're one of those yeah, people that are maintained. robots. Exactly. Well, I mean, eventually, hopefully, in, uh, well, down the line in the future, they will. But until then, they need a Jordan. They need somebody to keep those things in order. Now, most of these robots, I mean, are they? Think, in, I think everybody needs a little Jordan in their life. That's just me. You know, I've heard that. I heard that somewhere. I think it's a proverb. It might be. It, it could, is. could be in the Bible. Uh, those of you, don't it, look it up. It's probably in there. Uh, just take my word for it. Uh, everybody needs I'm a little Jordan. Sure it's in, <laughs> yeah, it's in, way, it's, in, it's in Wade chapter 13, verse 69. That's a little known <laughs> Part of the Bible, uh, I think. I think we're being blasphemous. <laughs> okay, uh, it's not cloudy outside. I'm not getting struck by light. Hey, <laughs> all right, you're making me laugh already. We're just just in the beginning. Just just getting to know the myth, the man, the myth, the legend, the Jordan, who also is the Arkansas Deadpool, uh, uh, Mr. Wade Wilson if you will. So uh, yeah, uh, you're a 31 year old man. Have you always lived in Arkansas? No. Um, I was born and raised in Northwest Arkansas until I was about 18. And then I decided to be one of the smarter people in the world and join the Navy. <laughs> okay. You know, sign your life away. Never so, again. Uh, volunteer I, yourself. Ex- oh man, you know, <laughs> you know, and the village um, people song. Those are the two things that I, I, I equate to, to being in the Navy. You know, they were wrong. They were so wrong. <laughs> but w- it was but what a recruiting tool. I mean, it was. I mean, yeah, I got in a headdress and danced around naked on a ship a few times, but... But that was off-duty. no one along with me. But that was uh, off-duty. Sure. That wasn't anything that was commanded by your commanding officer. Wink, wink. Sadly, no. <laughs> wink. <laughs> no, that involved much That involved much more fall gags and lube. All right, then. <laughs> Moving on, tell me about your time in the Navy, man. I mean, what kind of jobs were you doing in the Navy? Um, in the Navy, um, I was an avionics electronics technician. Come so on. I worked on, and I actually, uh, I was in the uh, secret, the top secret shop. So I had a security clearance and worked in a shop where <laughs> it was really nice. I would almost say that it was unfair because I worked in a shop where there was a short list of people who were allowed in and out. So we got to do pretty much whatever we wanted in our shop. Wait, you said um, secret. You this, turn- this is an open line. Prank caller. Prank caller. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> prank caller. Prank caller. <laughs> no, but do, you uh, got no, to do whatever I, you wanted in, in the shop, kind of uh, designing your own thing? It, we, yeah, we got, to, we got to fiddle around with stuff. And I mean, we didn't have to worry about a bunch of higher ups coming in and really looking over our shoulder and stuff. So it was really relaxed. Um, we, I mean, we did our jobs. And once we did our jobs, we relaxed. And, you know, it was, 
it was it was more of a sitcom. I mean, we had you know we did the pranks, we did the jokes. When, like I said, when things weren't going on, and because we worked on communication navigation systems, um, and those things aren't you know we used to make the jokes in the Navy that you know the Navy the Navy buys the lowest bidder, <laughs> um, and so you know there's a lot of there's a lot of things in the Navy that we always made jokes about were made to break. Well, when it comes to communication navigation systems, that's the one thing you don't want breaking in the middle of a flight. Oh, you got that and right. So <laughs> communication so, so, is the key to success. <laughs> exactly. And so that was, you know, so we didn't have as many repairs as other shops would have had. So we had more downtime. Um, so I probably, I like to, I like to tell people when, when I give my full military story, I like to say that I was very spoiled when it came to the military. I got the luck of the draw nine times out of 10. All right. Just on certain things. Well, my brother was a corpsman in the Navy, and he never got on a boat <laughs> for six years. I was, I was in for, I was in for four years, and I was on a boat for a total of eight months okay. out of the four years. And the only, and the only reason I went on the boat is because I broke my wrist. You know what's funny is he did not go on a boat because he broke his wrist or broke his hand. He he accidentally, and I'll put the air quotes up for the people that are listening. Yeah, Brooke put his hand through a car window, so, so he wouldn't uh, have to go on I hate a boat. When that happens by accident. <laughs> yeah, I think he didn't want to leave his girlfriend, now wife, at the time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I understand. I mean, I've accidentally decapitated someone before. W- what? <laughs> and now, yeah. I'm hoping that this is the Arkansas Deadpool persona that just came out. Maybe is Uh-oh. it the yellow bubble or the white bubble? Uh oh. <laughs> All right, maybe you could delve more into that story. Because that is a very, you decapitated <laughs> someone? Yeah. I mean, read the comic. Okay. I got one right here. Whew. All right. I think people, <laughs> he, is, he is the persona at this moment. All right. I'd like to speak to Jordan now. I'd like to speak to Jordan. All right. Calling Jordan. He's here. He's here. <laughs> I kid. I kid. We have fun on this podcast. We play. We do. And you tell stories, man. You can tell stories any way you want. You, this could be your All life right. story. That could be. This could be uh, Arkansas Deadpool's life story. You grew up in Northwest Arkansas, Mister Jordan, and you. I did. I mean, you went to school out there. How was how was your school life? How did you spend it you know, oh. with the kids out there? How'd they treat you? Oh, it was. I mean, little oh, whew, <laughs> little uh, little podunk towns uh, bouncing around. I mean, I never moved more than thirty minutes from one spot. Um, went to a bunch of different schools, all little bitty schools. I was. And uh, it's, it's strange because I, I really wish, I mean, I'm sure everyone can say this. I wish I was the person I was now mentally in school because, you know, being a little kid, and I know it happens a lot. Um, I was bullied a lot. Um, I actually, I, I had to uh, I had to transfer schools because I got bullied so bad. Oh. Um, and it came from, it came from the attitude of wanting to, wanting to be the popular kid wanting to hang out with the popular kids. And it, it really did strive me. It drove me away from indulging in my passion, which, was? um, you know, the stuff I'm able to do now, you know, comic books, video games. Um, I mean, I loved, I've always loved sports. I mean, I've, I've always not, I'm not gonna say I, I try to be well-rounded. I mean, it just, it just kind of happened that way. I kind of, I like, I like little pieces of everything. I can't ever say that I'm, I'm a jack of all trades. Be- only because I don't, I don't focus so much on one thing because I like, I love to dabble in everything and just have something different to do. Um, but when I was a kid, it, I just spent so much time, you know, I was like, Oh, I want to hang out with these guys. These are the cool guys. But you know, when you're that, when you're that nerdy kid that wants to hang out with the cool kids, you know, you just get picked on all the time and it just, it just got really bad. And so until I was about, until I was about an 11th, 10th or 11th grade and I just had enough and I was like you know what I don't want to be friends with anybody like I've, I've had it but then that then that turned that turned opposite and I would say probably through my junior and high junior and senior years I became the jerk mm-hmm. I went from being the bully kid to the jerk um, and it wasn't until I was it, probably not until I was 21 22 that it even hit me that I even realized that that's what I was doing uh, luckily all the friends I had in high school I was able to go back and explain all that and be like, Hey, this is what I've realized about myself. And I'm sorry. Like I was, I was a jerk and I school. I don't know why y'all are still friends. With me. Mm. Um, 
So it was, it was a strange transition through my childhood. Well, as I see it, going, Jordan, gr- it gr- people growing up, they, they have to find themselves, find their interests, find their people, find their tribe. And what you were doing was going around uh, trying to find your tribe. You, you you got with the jocks and and tried to see if you could fit in there. You got with other groups, I'm guessing, and see uh, saw if you could fit in there. And and I guess you found you found your group by the time you were ready to graduate uh, and and became a kind of a jerk. I I think I I did the same thing, man. I, I wore Hawaiian shirts at, uh, one day and then parachute pants the next and dressed like a surfer. A few times, so I mean, uh, it, it it happens. Makes, you, you, it's as you grow, Jordan. So yeah, it makes, continue that that, par- that parachute pants comment made me miss Jinko jeans. <laughs> I'm not even Jinko sure what that is. And, oh, you don't you don't remember the big jeans? You could fit like six legs in one pant leg. <laughs> Just the big baggy M M&M and M pant legs. I had the bleached hair, the big baggy jeans. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. If you're, if you're, yeah, talking about big baggy jeans that you'd kind of cinch up with a belt. I, I think the kids are wearing them yeah. nowadays and, and dropping their pants and showing their their underwears. I hope I hope that trend oh is gosh. is just now uh, finishing up. <laughs> I, I hope so. I hope that's one of those trends that doesn't come full circle. <laughs> you know, I think trends uh, happen every every twenty years. Things come back. And the 60s come oh. back in the 80s, come back in the 2000s. You know, people uh, start uh, dressing for nostalgia. So 20 years ago, and it's as kids grow up, you know, once they, they get to be 18, they start digging through mom and dad's closet, trying to find something funky that they used to wear. And and I think that's how fashion trends end up, you know, but uh, that's, it is. that might be just me. That, that's something that just came to my head. It's just a theory, a working theory right now. I mean, now. it makes it makes complete sense. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, yeah. I just came up with that. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the first one I to mean, think of it. You, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, if not, we need to trademark that thought right there. <laughs> it's no, just been no done. Pride. As it gets recorded no on a podcast. Pride, <laughs> it's set in stone. It cannot be changed. It is forever there. <laughs> You're right. I don't edit these things. I'm not good. Well, I am good at editing, but I like to leave them out there raw. So, all right. Master Jordan, the Wade Wilson, the I Arkansas Deadpool. We're talking to you, man, as you're growing up and, and finding your way in the world. Uh, you, you became a, a kind of a, you, you, you know yourself from high school. But uh, when you got out mm-hmm. of high school, you said, I, I got to make a change, man. And that's, you know, funny. That's what my brother did. He quit high school two months before he graduated. And then he joined the Navy. He got his GED and then joined the Navy. And it straightened him right up. Do you feel like it straightened it you did. right up? Oh, it did. I mean, I would not, I would not trade one day of my military career for anything. Um, it did. It, it made me, it made me mature and it made me, I wouldn't say mature. It made me more mature. Uh, it, it really did. It really set me, it set me on a straight path and it, it really caused me to realize a lot of things about myself and to just stop. I mean, what I tell every young person that ever talks to me, I'm, I'm not just telling be yourself, like just, enjoy be happy within your own body and your own self and that's what i really learned in the military where i was and that's when i started diving into all the things that i knew i loved as a kid that i was like hey i have my own money now and i can do what i want it's almost so <laughs> i'm gonna you know so it's, it's where you really start to indulge in your own hobbies and you know and it, it was great that's true i mean high school and even grade school all your school years you, you it's a struggle your your kids are cruel they, they fight with you. You you fight with them. You're trying to find your way. But yeah, once you become an adult, and I'm talking to the fine listeners that are under the age of 18 or maybe under the age of 20 that still haven't found their way, that are getting picked on and, or are picking on people. You know, hey, uh, once you get to a, a, to your 20s, this is the time for you to discover yourself, to, to find those interests and, and do what you want to do. You spent your 20s out there in the Navy. Now, hopefully... This is me. I I don't want any more war. I don't think a lot of people want war in this world. I hope that the armed forces uh, have to stop calling themselves the armed forces and become, you know, maybe the military, whatever that word may mean, and and provide help to people all over the world. Uh, this is my this is my dream. But uh, in the Navy, did you have any chance to to visit other parts of the world and and get perspective in that respect? I did. I. Uh... I was complete. I was completely West Coast based, so it was all it was all of those ports. Um, even though I was on a, only on a ship for eight months, uh, we went to places like Dubai, um, Malaysia, Hong Kong, 
uh, the Philippines. Uh, where else did we go? Hong Kong, Malaysia, Philippines. Bye. Uh, there was one more. Where else did we go? <laughs> well, what kind of but activities it was, it was did you the, do there? Um, <laughs> well, we went, we did the, you know, the military has their, their sanctioned, their sanctioned and, um, sponsored events that you can do. Uh, we did a couple of like jungle treks and, uh, we did jungle hikes in Dubai. We went to all their real fancy water parks. Um, the Philippines, we ate some amazing food. I shopped at all the markets in Hong Kong. Um, you know, I did a lot of touristy stuff. Uh, just, I mean, because we only had two or three days, you know, once we got to a port to spend that time. So we just, it was best to do the touristy things just to be able to get the experience. Yeah, I find in some of those places, and I've never been outside of these United States, uh, you know, I find... That when I'm listening to people that have gone to those places, even in in Mexico, just south of the border, you go to the main uh, cities. But if you go on, you know, just off the trek, maybe a couple of blocks to the left or to, or to the right in one direction or another, you're going to find that, that that's the real town, the poverty, the, the people in the struggle. Mm-hmm. They, you know, so if you get stuck in those little touristy areas, you haven't really seen the real Dubai. It's just the the Dubai facade. And that, that's just me, yep. you know, as somebody who hasn't traveled there, what did you, what did you gain in perspective uh, from being in those, in those places that uh, I've, I've only read about, I've only seen, seen pictures of. Well, I mean, you're, you're completely right. I mean, they, they will tell you and they'll show you, you know, you can go to the main parts, you can go to the touristy parts, you can go to all the big attractions. Um, but you're about wrong. I mean, a few blocks left, a few blocks, right. Not even a mile. I mean, you, you see the real deal. You see, like you said, you see the poverty, you see the, you see the real image that's not portrayed anywhere. And it, it'll throw you for a loop. Um, it's, well, it's strange. It's strange to see. Yeah. I'm not even saying in just in other countries, even in the, the big cities here, I grew up in Miami. And if you fly over Miami, you, you'll see South beach or, or the, the, you know, the strips, the, the Fort Lauderdale strip where people will go to visit. But then even the airports, there's big giant walls that are put up around the airport, uh, the the expressways, so you don't see the impoverished area. So it's not just happening in other world, uh, in other countries. And people want to have that, those tourist dollars, but uh, you know it, it happens everywhere. You know, and and I guess that's uh, maybe that's a, another agenda that I'm into is just trying to help people. I, I see a lot of impoverished folks, uh, not just all over the world, but right here in our hometown in Arkansas. People standing on the streets, yeah. struggling. And in this time, while we're all, you know, well, there's a lot of people that are out of work, even people that, that were living paycheck to paycheck, that were just one paycheck from being homeless, are probably now looking at homelessness. But, uh, you know, I'm glad you have a job still, Jordan, working from home. Uh, where are you living now? You're from Northwest Arkansas, but but you're living where now? Uh, now I live in Maumelle. Mom L. And that's just a hop, skip and a jump from me. And I, I know normally we would have done this face to face, but you know, in this pandemic, it, it, am I scared of it? Am I scared that I'm going to get it? Even if I get it, do you think I'll survive? I, I, I do believe I will survive it, but I am vigilant. You know, if, if the, the CDC and, and health officials are telling me to stay away from people and no hugs and, you know, Hey, I'll do it. I'll do this over the phone. It's I, hard. I'll get to no, know Jordan. No hugs is hard. No hugs is hard, man, especially for a Deadpool who likes to hug, it's man. Just, his heart is I, out man, there. I, yes. I'm telling you, man, my, my first convention back, I'm just going to set up, I'm going to carry, a, I'm going to strap a booth around me that's just a hugging booth. And you yeah. can open a door, hug me. That's all it's going to be. I'm not moving all day. I'm standing in one spot. I'm going to have my hugging booth attached to my body. That's <laughs> what, what it's going to be. You better believe it. You better believe it, Master Jordan. All right. So uh, we're in the Navy. You get, I mean, you're going through the Navy. Any other Navy stories you want to tell before we get out of this? Whoo, whoo. Um, I mean, oh, we could sit. I could sit here for an hour just telling Navy stories. I'm here. Um, I mean, I would, rec- I would, I would recommend it. I would, um, if some, if anyone who doesn't know what they want to do and they're young, go to the military. Um, it's not, it's not always pleasant, but. I mean, there's so many helpful outlets and I wouldn't have the job I have now. I mean, I had zero college experience. I did not go to college. Huh. And now I'm, now I'm an engineer for a surgical robotics company with zero college. It's, it's strictly military training that got me my job. Sounds good to um, me. 
And that, that's the thing is if you go to the military, find a good job that will translate to the, to the outer world. And I mean, there's no better, I think there's no better way to transition into the real world. And I mean, unless you, unless you know what you want to do going into college, you know, the degree you want, what you're going to use it for. That's great. I love people who have that drive. I was not one of those people. And I know a lot of people don't have that drive. Um, and so the military will, they'll put you on the right path. Oh yeah. I tell people if you're a scientist into math, uh, do it, save the world, go. That's not me. I've been to college a bunch of times, mostly just for, you know, for a specific thing, communications, uh, psychology, uh, fire science, because I was a firefighter for a little while, uh, paramedic, you know, I did that for a little while, but, but it, this is specific courses. You go there, you're in, you learn what you got to do, you get out. And what you did was you yep. did it in, in the Navy and in, in the military. And I could see that happening. You know, you got your skills and you, you use it in the real world. So, I mean, give me one good story uh, of the Navy. What, 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 I mean, one thing that happened that was so cool and you, oh yeah, this came to mind. Here you go. All right. Well, uh, when, when I was out on my deployment, my one deployment I was out on, I was out on an aircraft carrier. Um, Which one? It was, the, um, it was, oh gosh, the Carl Vinson. Okay. Not the, the Theodore the Roosevelt Vincent, that's in the news lately. <laughs> no, I wasn't, I wasn't on that one. Okay. Um, and this is honestly one of, I think is the most worldly, worldly neat stories that I have in the military is so I was night shift. Um, well, it would have been night shift here. Um, and so I'm just laying in my rack. We're in the middle of the Arabian sea. Um, and, uh, I get woken up and there's just chaos, chaos going on. This is about May, 2010, huh. somewhere around there, March, April, May, spring of 2010. You know, there's everyone in our, everyone's up in awe and telling us, you know, we have to come down to watch the news. Every, you know, our, our CO commanded that everybody come down and watch the news. Well, we pop on the news and the first thing we see is, you know, we have killed Osama bin Laden. Oh, okay. Yeah. I remember um, that. And so, well, we're sitting here thinking, well, I, you know, I look left, I look right. And I talked to my, talked to my buddies in my shop and I said, you realize they're going to bring him here. So what do you mean? I was like, we're the only aircraft carrier in the Arabian Sea and the Navy SEAL just killed Osama bin Laden. Where do you think they're going to bring him? That makes sense. Sure enough, about two hours later, we get a call. Everything is shut down. Um, you know, the armed guards in the air, in the, uh, in the hangar bay, do, you know, do not enter signs. You can only travel through certain areas of the aircraft carrier. Um, and it was that way for about a day and a half until, you know, everything was said and done. And then our, you know, we all knew what was happening and our CO, our commanding officer came on and, you know, he finally announced, he goes, you know, we weren't allowed to say anything, but now we can tell you, you know, he, he was trying to be, he was trying to be funny with it. And he goes, you know, we had a special visitor over the last couple of days. Uh, so we were, I was actually on the aircraft carrier that harbored his body and did the burial at sea for Osama bin Laden. Wow. What a story to tell. I mean, did you I actually have, yeah, I actually have a coin that, uh, on one side has the USS Carl Vinson and on the other side has, you know, a portrait of his face with a X through it and his date, date of death. Um, only a certain amount, I don't know how many, there may be more now, but when I was on the ship, a certain number of those were made. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were given to certain people and well, one of the guys who got them, you know, got it from an officer for doing a special job for him. Um, the guy was a parachute rigger and, you know, they have their sewing machines and everything. Um, you know, and so they did some patches for an officer and they did, you know, they did something in a pinch for an officer and he gave them this coin. Well, this person bet this coin while we were playing spades and I ended up winning that coin. So now that's, I was, I was, I felt it was awesome to hold that little piece of history. Yeah. Like I said, at, at the time there was only 30 to 60 coins made. So I don't know how many there are now. But at the time, that's all that were made. And to have one of those was really special. I mean, I thought that was a really cool moment. No, you came away with a piece of history. And right now, you're giving a history lesson to those that are listening in the future. Uh, that uh, this happened at this time, uh, you know, and you have that, that little piece of commemoration. To, of, uh, I mean, it, it's not cool uh, or, it, you know, that, that somebody had to die. But, uh, you know, it, I think it brought the country together, brought people together. In to uh, this was not a nice man, very unsportsmanlike fellow, uh, to put it the most <clears throat> most mildly. Uh, he know. was. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't shake hands after softball. Yeah. No. 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 And, and well, yeah. You know, I, I don't shake hands, and I haven't shaken hands in a long time. 
because you, you you never know what's on people's hands. And it turns out after after all this time of not shaking hands and just giving daps and and uh, you know uh, maybe even not even high fives, man, because that's open palm as well. <laughs> but uh, you know, I've been a guy that's been giving daps. It turns out that I was right after all this time. <laughs> but no, 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 Chris, high five. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I haven't handshaked in, in years, years, man. And, and I guess, am I a germaphobe? No, I guess I just meet so many people. <laughs> I don't know what I mean, their I hands are that. doing. I understand that. Yeah. But uh, that too, I mean, I digress, man. That was an, a very powerful story that you told, uh, man, that you were on that ship. Did you see any of the burial process or were you able to get out no. and, and take a look? They, no. No, we were we were completely shut off. They like I said they had armed guards at every possible entrance to the hangar bay when all of this was going on. Um, I know shortly after there were like leaked photos that someone took a picture. I'm like, no, nope, that definitely wasn't it. Yeah, sequestered. Um, Just but, you were very yeah. you were very sequestered, and only a chosen few uh, got to witness it. But you know, and and that's something that that I commend uh, the military and, and America for is even though that they you know killed this person. Uh, they still uh, honored his religious attributes and buried him in the proper amount of time in a proper way. I guess according to I guess Muslim traditions. I, I'm not a Muslim. I I, I I have very few dealings with Muslims as far as their religion and, and discussions. But but it, it seems like they did the right thing uh, to to. And, I, and I'm in complete agreement with you there. I was I was very proud, you know, being in the military um, and everything. I was very proud of the way it was handled. Yeah. Um, cause it's not what I, it's not what I expected. Sadly, it's not how I expected it to go. Yeah. All right. I would have, I honestly, I honestly would have expected them to leave his body lying in the sand. <laughs> um, so for them to actually, and I, and I just saw him with you for them to actually bring him on and do a proper, I don't know, uh, to do a proper Muslim burial at sea. I was like, I said, I, that made, that was a very proud moment for me as an American and as a mil- member of the military that we did something right to someone who was seen as such a horrible person. Yeah. All right. Man, that's a story to tell for the ages, uh, for Thanksgivings to come. Uh, you, you have, uh, you definitely have one in your back pocket. Uh, you know, how do you top that? Now, I guess that's the the biggest story that you have from from the Navy and and, and the camaraderie. That is my biggest one, yeah. Oh, for sure. But uh, all right, moving on. I mean, how, how did the rest of your naval career go? And you say you spent how many years in there? Just four. I just did my four. Um, and it was it was kind of strange. Um, my I don't remember exactly how it went down. I'm, I mean, I'm glad it did because I'm in a career now that I will spend the rest of my life in hopefully. Um, but about the time that my four years was coming up, they did this thing called perform to serve. Um, and I guess they, you know, there were certain jobs, they hired too many people in particular jobs. Mm-hmm. And so when it came around, you submitted your name, you submitted all of your, you submitted all of your, uh, Oh gosh, what were they called? Your evaluations. You submitted all your evaluations over your four years, and in the in the three years that I was at my base, after all my training, I was the you know I was not I'm not trying to brag. This is fact. I was the number one you know sailor for my rank for my rank in my job. I was the number one sailor on base for three years. Hey, if you're gonna do it, do it right. Um, Good on you. <laughs> and uh, and it was. And that, that still wasn't enough. They said, we know you were in, you were hired in this job. And so we either need you to change jobs or get out of the military. You know, your four years is up. We're not going to hire you back at your same job. You can change jobs or you can get out. Um, and I loved my job. And the thing is, with, with all my test scores, my jobs were um, explosive ordnance disposal or special warfare. or and I, and I had just had a kid. And I was like, well, I don't want to be special warfare and I don't want to be, I don't want to be EOD. Those are not the things I want to do as a father. Yeah, that sounds dangerous. Um, I, I think they have robots to do that, don't they? They do. <laughs> but I guess the military thinks that people are still expendable. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so I decided to get out. Yeah, so, uh, you know, and, you had and a that was, and I was, yeah, I mean, and I was, I was 21, 22 at the time. Uh-huh. Um, and so I think, yeah, 21, 22, yeah, almost 23. Anyway, um, so I opted to get out and it was, it was terrifying. You know, I didn't know where I wanted to move. I was stationed in California. I didn't know if I wanted to move back home. I didn't know what was going on. Luckily, I mean, this is where the military can really help people out. Uh, the military t- took 
um, they took my resume with all of my military training in it and, you know, kind of portfolio that towards the, towards the civilian world. And they have specific military job hiring conferences where different military people can come in and interview with different companies for, for jobs that relate to what you did in the military. Um, that and sounds I did a couple, great, I did a, man. That you, so, it, 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 I loved it. Yeah, I hear about people that get out of the Navy or get out of the, the military and just get put to the, the streets. And I guess that's the thing that, that happened in the past, you know, especially people coming back from the Vietnam War. Oh, now they're stuck in the streets because they, they haven't had a, had a job. But, but the, the Navy gave you some, some kind of job placement or at least farmed out they your did. resume a little bit. They did, uh, and it was and it was very helpful. I interviewed with a couple companies. There was a, I think there was an HVAC company in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that I interviewed with, and then uh, and then this job. I saw this job opening for this surgical robotics company that was only at the time was only thirteen years old. I mean, a very young company. Um, they'd only been in a company since nineteen ninety nine, um, and so. I saw they had an opening for Arkansas, so I started interviewing for it. And my my goal was I didn't if I didn't find a job, I was going to use my GI Bill and I was going to be a dentist, honestly. <laughs> um, so you know, I saw that this was in the medical field, and it didn't. I looked at it versus all these other possible jobs, and you know, the salary wasn't that high, as high. But you know, I thought to myself, you know, this is a medical device company, like. Mm, medicine and hospitalization are not going anywhere in the future. That's one thing that's always going to stick around. Jordan, you keep saying medical device. It had the word robots right in there. Robots. <laughs> I'm going to go work or working with robots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, um, that would pull me right uh, in. <laughs> yeah. So, so I really focused, I kind of put off all the other companies and threw all my, I threw all my eggs in one basket with this company and, you know, dove in and did my research and, you know, tried to nail every phone call interview and they ended up, uh, you know, like I said, I was stationed in California. They ended up asking me to come out to San Jose where their uh, main offices are. And I came out to San Jose and visited with a couple of people and interviewed face to face. Um, Some to find out, you know, at the time, it's a little bit different now, but at the time the company um, was about 86% ex-military. Huh. Um, so that's what they did. They specifically looked for X, you know, cause they know what they're going to get. Um, they know the kind of people they're going to get. Um, and so, so I hired on with the company in December of 2011. Um, at 23 years old, I was the youngest field engineer they had ever hired. Their average hiring age is between 30 and 35. And here I am 23 years old and they took a chance. Um, there was not an engineer. There was not an engineer based in Arkansas. It was being taken care of by the guys in Tulsa and the guys in Memphis. Um, and they needed, they needed someone central. They needed someone to be in Arkansas. So I ended up getting the job and I've been with the company for nine years now. You're a superstar, Jordan. All right. You already alluded <laughs> to it. You have a child. And, and once again, you, you did uh, allude to uh, how the child was made in the beginning of this podcast. When a mommy and daddy love each other very much, but how, uh, when? Yeah, I don't think that's how my that's not necessarily how my first child was made. <laughs> well, tell me about tell me about that. Brag on the on the kid and and uh, you know where where are your people? Do, do they still live here in Arkansas? Um, my uh, my family all lives in Northwest Arkansas still. Um, I uh, I met my daughter's mom. Mm-hmm. I met her. Uh, before I joined the Navy, she was one of my best friends. Um, uh, we got along so well. I mean, it was weird. So close, such good friends. Um, and then when I joined the military, you know, didn't hang out with any of my friends for, you know, a couple of years. And then me and her just decided to get a little bit more serious. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're like, Hey, we've been friends for so long. Why not give this a try? Well, we gave it a try. Um, we were both really young and that's how, you know, she, you know, things happen. Mommy and daddy did things and, uh, we ended up having my daughter and it wasn't planned, but it's something that we kind of took and ran with. Um, as young kids, I mean, she was, she was 18 and I was 20. Mm. Um, and so we kind of ran with it and probably wasn't the smartest idea. <laughs> you know, we did, we did the shotgun wedding. We did the, you know, we did the, everything we could to do what we thought was right. Yeah. Um, 
we we tried to be a family we tried to get along and it just things just didn't work out um you know she did some things i did some things that weren't pertinent to marriage and we just didn't we didn't get along as a married couple well sometimes that happens so, but you got a baby girl yeah we did and she uh she's 10 now and she uh you know, so after I got out of the Navy and we moved back, it didn't, it wasn't long after we, because all her family lived here as well. Uh-huh. Um, so it wasn't long after we moved back that, you know, we kind of, we, it, the marriage didn't end well. <laughs> as, I mean, I'm not sure any, any end well, but, um, but it was rough. It was a rough, it was a rough first year, um, of the divorce. Um, it was a lot of arguing, a lot of back and forth. Cause I mean, she moved back to Northwest Arkansas with my daughter and it was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of stuff going on to where I ended up, uh, when my daughter was two, um, I ended up getting full custody. Oh, that's um, unusual so for a, a father uh, to have the full yeah, custody. It's... Um, so from the time she was two until she was about seven, seven or eight, um, I had full custody. Um, and it was about the time, probably about the time she was, she was six or seven that, uh, you know, her mom, her mom really got like things together and she got, she got her head on. She was never like a bad mom. She was never, it just wasn't a, it wasn't a good situation. It wasn't a great situation for my daughter. It was just a better situation for her to be with me. Well, good. I'm um, glad she was with you. I mean, uh, you know, we, yeah. people, people are young. They do things. <laughs> you don't have to do yep. in the detail, but, uh, all, all's yeah. working out now. Oh, I mean, a, a lot of mature, a lot of maturing came along with her mom. And so that was where it got to the point where my daughter, you know, she wanted to be with her mom and she gave me a legitimate reason. She said, you know, I want to go to school where my cousins go to school. I want to, you know, I want to be around my family. She says, you know, we live up here, you know, for a, this coming from a seven year old, I was like, oh, well, you know, you're giving me legitimate reasons and your, and your mom is much better off and your mom's in a great place. I, I had no reason to say no. Excellent. You did the um, right thing. So it, was, it was one of the. It was one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make, giving yeah. custody back. Um, it, it sucked. And like I said, it was just me and her. It was just me and my daughter for five years. Um, and then, uh, so in between there, in between all of that time, I did get married a second time. Hey, mazel tov. Um, eh, well, hold that thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, I, you know, I, I met someone while I was working, and we ended up dating and getting married, and then we planned a for a kid and I ended up having a son with her. Um, but, uh, with her being a stepmom wasn't her favorite thing. Um, so that one, that one didn't last very long either. Um, and it was a lot of it had to do, uh, I mean, I can, I don't mind opening up about this. A lot of it had to do with me. Um, and I think that happened in both my marriages. I know it's a two way street. It takes, it takes two to tango, but I will say a lot of my problems in my marriages was, um, I had a lot of anxiety. Um, and that goes back to, that goes back to my high school days when I was so mean and such a jerk to my friends. Um, I had, I had, uh, moderate to severe anxiety. Um, and I didn't know it. Um, I had, I would get frustrated real easily and I would shut down and not want to talk to people or I would, you know, I would make a, I would make a mountain out of a molehill. You know, I just, I would take a little argument and make it something extravagant. Um, with friends, with my relationships, with everything. It kind of just, uh, it's something I never noticed until I finally, about three years ago, three or yeah, three years ago, I started, I decided to go to a therapist. Hmm. Um, I said, you know, I was like, I was like, there's a reason I'm angry all the time. Like, why am I angry all the time? So, you know, I went to a therapist and I, I mean, I still go to her. Um, just as, you know, I go to her not, I go to her about every couple of months now just to, you know, stay, to stay up to date and just make sure I'm still great on track and stuff. But, it was a lot of learning myself and it was a lot of, uh, learning, like I said, just learning that I had anxiety, learning what anxiety was and that I'm not an angry person, that I'm not mad all the time. It's just anxiety. Mm. Um, and so like I said, that was a lot of personal growth that I've endured over the last, uh, over the last three years. But, uh, so that had a lot to do with both of my marriages failing. Um, but, uh, but no, uh, but now, now you know things, yourself, you, you got some help and you, I do. you learn more. Yeah. And I mean, and I'm, I'm a huge advocate for, advocate for therapy. I, I recommend it to anyone that has any question about their life. Um, I, like I said, I still go, um, just to, like I said, just for checkups. Be like, Hey, this is what's going on in my life. And she'll tell me, she's like, Hey, you're doing great. You're fine. 
you know, carry on. Um, but, uh, but no, I have, I have fantastic, I have me and my, me and my second ex-wife, we get along great. We actually have 50, 50 custody of my son. So I have him for a week and she has him for a week. We live about a half a mile apart. We don't live far from each other. We get along great. She's remarried. And like I said, the relationships with both of my kids, mothers are fantastic. Super. Um, and it, it, it's a world of difference to do that, you know, to put a time to my, you know, yes, things happen during the marriages and I don't, it doesn't make me like them as a person, but it doesn't make me resent them as a parent because what's most important is my kids mm-hmm. and the relation. I feel like the relationship I have with the mothers of my children reflects the relationship I have with my kids. Um, and it's really, it's really made it great. You can see with my daughter, you can see a complete attitude change in her since the day me and her mom started getting along. I mean, we were able to, I don't know how often this happens, but me and my girlfriend and my ex, my first, my daughter's mom and her husband, we all took a family vacation to take my daughter to, uh, somewhere special for her birthday. Wow. And there's no arguing. There's no awkwardness. It's, you know, it's, it's a friendship. If any, if anything else, yeah, that um, says a lot. You're all, all grown the, up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so that's so that's uh, it's definitely a huge stress relief um, to not have to worry about that. To not have to worry about you know what my exes are going to think, what my exes are going to say or do, or if they're going to go off the handle because I have that relationship with them. And I talk. I mean, I talk to my exes at least once a week just to have updates on both of the kids. That is great. I'm glad you still have a relationship with your kids. You know, I, I had one of those myself when I was 23. I, I had a, a child out of wedlock and, uh, and she is uh, far away from me. You know, she got taken far away from me and I, I'm just now uh, getting back and uh, touching back in base with her. So I, I felt a lot of your pain and a lot of your, a lot of your anxiety as we speak. You know, she's, she's in yeah. Gainesville, Florida. Very far away, and she, she made me a grandpa. That's, yeah, that's so, a trick. Yeah, she she made me a grandpa. I, I met the grandpa virtually online using the technology that we have. So that's a beautiful thing as well. well. Congratulations to you. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I feel it, man. It, it's <clears throat> a it's a it's a love story. It's a life story, and sometimes things don't work out, but then in the, in the end, they do work out. You, you know, they you, they you, do. You know, uh, there and then, like I said, and, and had I not went through both of those divorces and everything I did, I never would have went to therapy. I wouldn't have learned so much about myself. And I mean, knowing knowing more about myself now, I mean, I'm probably in right now. I'm in the most I'm in the most healthy and happy relationship I've ever been in. Um, it's a complete it's a completely different kind of relationship than anything I've ever been in, and it's it's just a it's a world of difference just to know yourself to know how to know how you emotionally react to things, how you physically react to things. Like I said, it's it's a complete change. Yes. Know thyself. The ancient Greek aphorism. (laughs) And so, so you would take more things from the Greek. Yeah. (laughs) Everything good comes from the Greek. Wasn't that the big fat Greek wedding? I think that's what it was. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, man. Didn't they they invent naked wrestling? They invented uh, a lot of different things, man. (laughs) And, and, And everything can be cured with Windex. Right. <laughs> this portion of the podcast brought to you by Windex. <laughs> All right, Jordan, man, learning lots about you, man. And people listening can, can learn from you. You know, not, I, I don't know if they would be called mistakes, but life lessons is more. No, oh, absolutely. Apt. I wouldn't call anything I've been through a mistake. It's, it's all a stepping stone and a life lesson. Absolutely. And you got a little girl, and you got a little boy out of it. That's beautiful. You know, and you got some, yeah. good, you know, long, long lasting friendships. So, uh, you know, or, or relationships, but, uh, all right, yeah. beyond you got out of the Navy, you got into robotics and, uh, when did the, when did the comic book thing start happening? Uh, what is all that oh, about? Man. That's, that's a, that's a great story. Um, actually, um, I know, you know him, Webb of Warnock. I do. Um, I, he, that guy has known me since I was, since I was five years old. Him and his uh, lovely was, wife have been on was, this podcast. Yes, yeah, I love them. They are they're some of the best. They're some of the best people I know. Um, just as people in general, their their attitude towards everybody else and their demeanor, and that's not not one ounce of them is fake. Um, like I said, I've known I've known Matt for a very long time. I've I've known Stacy 
you know, as long as they've been together and they're, they're so genuine and they were so, just such good people. It's, they're an inspiration. Like it's, I, I love them. Yeah. They were up there but, in, uh, in Northwest Arkansas as well. Did you, did you know them they from are, up there? Uh, I did. I've, kn- I've known, I've known Matt. Like I said, I've known, Matt's known me. This is, I'm, Matt's known me since I was five. He was friends with an older cousin of mine. Um, oh. And then when I got out of the Navy, he was working with some of my friends from high school and, you know, we got, we became friends that way. Um, and, uh, and that's how we became friends. And we talked a lot and we played video games together. Um, the dude, don't ever challenge him on Halo. That dude is unreal. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good and tip. Stacey too, don't, Stacey, Stacey is a gamer herself and she's, she's up there. She puts me to shame. <laughs> um, but, uh, so Matt, Matt had messaged me one day. And he, he said, Hey, you know, you live in Mom L. Um, I'm going to come up to Conway to their Comic Con. I said, There's a Comic Con in Conway? What? Yeah. And this was, this was November, probably 2012, 2013, uh, 2013, somewhere around there. Um, I know I was but, involved uh, with that. I was the DJ for the first Comic Con. Conway, Comic Conway. <clears throat> oh, no. This, this is when it was, this is the last one. This is the last one. Um, the last one that was held only at the Faulkner Library. Right, that was the one I was the DJ in. I was on the the oh, stage nice. there. Mm-hmm. Okay, dressed um, as Doctor What. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> he uh, he messaged me and said that he was going to come up to our buddies, um, and he said, "Hey, do you want to go? I'm dressing up as Superman." I said, "That is awesome." I said, "I didn't even know we had comic conventions in Arkansas." Um, so he said he was dressing up as Superman. I said, well, I, maybe I can throw something together. So I run to, uh, I run to the store and try to find anything I can find to dress up like superhero. The closest thing I came to was an extra, extra small Robin shirt that <laughs> was very skin tight. And I had some, some Robin socks with little capes on them. And I wore my black running tight. Oh. With a mask, I still I still had a scraggly, patchy beard and short, like buzz hair, and I just I was, you know what I'm just gonna do it. Like I didn't want him to dress up by himself. I mean, he was gonna do it anyway. <laughs> but uh, I was like, oh, I'll just I'll just so I did. I showed up in my tights and my and my super like it's like a kid's extra small Robin shirt, and uh and that was it. That was the first that was the first uh, cosplay I did, um, and. Just, just seeing everybody there and just seeing, I mean, just seeing that group of people come together and seeing how much Matt enjoyed cosplaying. Um, me and him, it brought me and Matt, it brought me and Matt a lot closer. Um, and, uh, and so we started talking cosplay things. You know, he did, he wanted to do Spider Man. So he started getting his Spider Man stuff together. Um, and he said, Hey, you know, he just looked at me like, you should, you should cosplay Deadpool. And I'm a DC guy. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a Marvel guy. I I respect Marvel wholeheartedly, but I'm a DC guy. I have a huge DC tattoo on my back. Okay. Um, um, I have you know my top five DC guys. We can get that later. Um, but I have that. And so he goes, "You should be Deadpool." And I was like, "Who's Deadpool?" Um, and he goes, "Dude, it's did he perfect. smack you in the head right there?" No, he goes, "Dude, he goes, no, it's perfect." He goes, Cause "Am I am am I allowed to be a little bit?" X-rated. I try not to, but okay, uh, as you well, wish. Well, he he says he he just goes. He goes. Well, he goes. Well, Deadpool's a sarcastic asshole, mm-hmm. and he goes, "That's perfect for you." <laughs> um, and so I went with it. Um, and so he helped me. You know, he Matt guided me to. Uh, he guided me to a couple of places where I could get a suit, and so that's when I did. I got my first. Uh, I got my first Deadpool suit. It was just a lycra suit with all the accessories. Um. And just a blank mask that, you know, it covered my face. There wasn't a face shell in it or anything. Um, and so for a couple of years, uh, so for a couple of years, that's how it went. I mean, Matt was Spider-Man and he would do Superman every once in a while. And then our other buddy, Jesse, who, uh, he doesn't really cosplay anymore. Um, and even this is all before Matt even met Stacey. We did all, all our cosplay stuff together and it was great. It was, we were so happy. People loved it. Um, and then, uh, and it was, that's just how it kicked off. And then I decided, I, you know, I saw this, uh, I saw this light in me kind of just 
come out and how much I loved cosplaying, how much I loved seeing the joy in everyone you meet and the joy in people who just respect what you're doing. Now, did you do um, any of the really, research on the character itself, the character, and become? Oh, I absolutely, I absolutely did. Uh, you know, I, I dove into the character, I dove into the comics, uh, I dove into you know the movies when they came out. Um, I mean, all the way back to X Men Origins, where Ryan Reynolds was Wade Wilson in the horrible rendition that he was. Right. Um, I mean, I saw him do that Wade Wilson, and I said, "Wait, isn't that Deadpool?" <laughs> yeah. Um. But, uh, and so I really, I really dove into it and I really dove into the character and I really, I really liked it. Um, it was nice, you know, at first, at first my, my thought was, it's nice to be able to sit here and be an a-hole and no one knows who I am. Correct. Correct. It was probably, it was probably in, not until last year, uh, no, maybe a couple years ago, two years ago where I ever let anyone see me without my mask. <laughs> I never, I never unmasked at a convention. Um, I waited until I got home or when I got to my car, I never unmasked at a convention. Um, I never went to any of the after parties or anything like that. Uh, and so it was very, it was very just like I did my thing and I went home and even that it was still, it was great, but it wasn't until I started really getting into the family, um, and meeting people over and over and talking to them. And, and honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm really bad about reaching out to people and I might've not talked to people in a couple of months, but I've met some wonderful, wonderful friends through cosplay. Um, Matt and Stacy included. Um, oh my goodness. The, me and, the, the cosplay community here in Arkansas is so <clears throat> tight. Every time I go to these conventions and I, you know, I don't consider myself a cosplayer, but I've been, had, I've had the honor of, of providing the music and the sound uh, for various, yeah. uh, you know, uh, occasions and, and, you know, one of, I guess the first one was the, the, the first Faulkner County comic con way that was held in the library. And I know that they yeah. do one day in the library and then two days on at the convention center, but you were talking a little bit about, uh, the, the build of your, of your original cosplay. Uh, tell me a little bit what's you said it was just a, a regular mask. I don't know what you're talking about without a face shield or is there like, Something to make uh, it more comfortable. Without a, it's not something to make it more comfortable. It's something that, you know, because if you wear the, just the regular lycra mask over or the spandex mask over your face, you know, it forms to your face. Um, but they have a lot of face shells, which are that the plastic or carbon fiber shells that go in, you know, that your mask go over that kind of shapes your face more to the character. Oh. Um, and it helps, it helps you breathe. And it's, it's, it's definitely a lot more comfortable. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was just a, it was just a suit. It was a little suit that I bought from, uh, oh, who was it? It was, uh, oh, I forgot, Zentai, Zentai.com or something like that. Um, and it, and like I said, that's what I rocked for a couple years until I saw one guy who was doing commissions. It was a guy who worked on the original Deadpool movie and he started doing commissions for, you know, he started doing them very particular mm-hmm. and he did them for like, he did them for one of the Backstreet Boys. And he did them for a lot of, you know, higher end people. But then he realized that more people wanted it. So he started doing just regular commissions. And so I decided, I was like, I'm going to save up and I'm going to get one of these movie quality Deadpool suits. Like, that's my goal. Um, and so it took a few years, but I finally got to where, you know, I bought it. Uh, I bought it two years ago. Well, I, I like think I've said it before. This, two years ago this month. If you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> you, you, do it, you do saved, it all the way. Yeah, you saved your pennies. And the suit that you have is definitely movie quality. If you walk into the room, people are going to think, oh, is that Ryan Reynolds just showed up at this convention? Uh, you know, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think that's great. <laughs> I think the best, honestly, it's not even the Ryan, speaking of Ryan Reynolds, it, it comes down to, I think the best compliment I've ever got in my suit was, uh, was at, oh, where was it? It was a little, the last Little Rock Comic Con that I went to. And a lady came up to me and she goes, hey, can I ask you a question? It's, it's really personal. I said, yeah, go ahead, anything. No, I was in character. I, most time, I'm, when I'm in the suit, I rarely break character. Right. Um, and I was like, yeah, anything. Ask me a question. She goes, she goes are you wearing butt pads? <laughs> said, no, ma'am. I said, no, ma'am, this is all me. She goes, well, your butt's better than Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, America's butt. <laughs> yeah, it's America's butt. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you stole that away from Captain America. <clears throat> oh, that's fantastic. It's a great fun. compliment. That I'll shows challenge that- him all day that you uh you become the character man you you're actually exercising or or getting your body into the right shape to to play this character to 
to, to, to the T. Not that, and, and I know I, that you're into body positivity as well. If a fat guy like me got into a an Arkansas Deadpool, it, I, I'd, I'd feel, I, I'd, I'd have to know myself. Like, like the Deadpool knows himself in the movies. I would have to know myself. Yes, I don't have the body type to be the Deadpool in the comic books or even on the movies, but I would be a different kind of Deadpool. And I would have to know that and love it. <laughs> what are your and thoughts? That's what it is. That's what it is. No, that's, that's exactly. It. And the reason that the reason I have the body positivity is because someone, no matter what shape or size or height or anything, if someone who puts on someone who cosplays, they put on their costume, they look in the mirror and they are happy before they walk out of that house. They put that on and they are happy. So what should it matter what anyone else thinks if that person is happy when they get there, when they walk out of their house, they did something that brought joy to them. And I am not going to take that away from anyone. I think that's a meme that I saw very recently. If you see me over here being happy, leave me alone because I deserve that. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Uh, And yes, I see people that are of all shapes and sizes, all ages. I I talked to uh, cosplayers on this uh, podcast and one of them calls herself the over 40 cosplay. She runs a group like that. And yes, if you're over 40, please cosplay, continue. If it makes you happy, the the people at at comic book conventions are a certain kind of people. And, and I know now because of the movies, it's becoming a very wider, it's a much wider spectrum. Uh, you know, people of all ages and all walks of life are going in there. Even if they've never read a comic book, you know, me, myself, I grew up on comic books. You know, one of my favorites was, I mean, my favorite is captain America. And I had the comic book where he, he had, uh, uh, he had obviously thrown the shield on the cover. He had all obviously thrown the shield and the Punisher had stepped on it. So he's kind of got his hands in the air like, whoa, and the Punisher caught my shield. Ah, And, and I'm, I yeah. love that comic and I missed that comic and I've looked it up and I know it's still out there, but it, it's just too costly to, to replace that comic. I've lost it over the years. Uh, I mean, tell me I about your, that. tell me about your comic book collecting. If you have done that or what got you into comics, uh, you know, were you in it at, at a young age up in Northwest Arkansas or, or were you, no, did you is that uh, something recent? It, it was something recent, you know, probably when I, when I started cosplaying is when I started comic book collecting. Um, I have, honestly, I don't have a lot of Deadpool comics. Um, uh-huh. I have, my my Deadpool treasure is, it comes from, I have the entire Deadpool, uh, Deadpool wedding series. Cool. Um, the, the Deadpool gets married series. It, it bounces back between a few different comics, between Deadpool and Spider-Man and different Deadpool universes. It bounces back and you have to collect a different you have to collect the different editions or and the comics from from the stories. Um, and then the last one I ended up getting was a it was, you know, Deadpool's wedding. Uh, Deadpool's wedding. And the Deadpool wedding comic actually has the most it's the comic with the most Marvel characters on one cover um, of any other comic book. That's how they get you, man. They make you go from yeah. comic book to comic book. I know that the the um the the Arrowverse on the WB was doing the same thing. And when they did their crossovers, you had to watch one show to the other show to, to see, you know, how, how it uh, developed. And I'm guessing the Deadpool, it was when she, he married a uh, Shikla. Yes. That's my favorite marriage. Of Deadpool. That's my favorite Deadpool relationship. Okay. And, and so and did you get a, a lot of your, your character study into that? And I mean, I, I know that when you get into the Deadpool, you become, the Deadpool and it's got to be amazing for, for the kids and for the people that see you, not just for the, the ladies that admire your backside, but uh, certainly other people that want to have pictures taken. If you're in character and, and you get them to, to give them that experience, how does that make you feel as the Deadpool character? It, I mean, just you talking about it, I got chills. Yeah. Um, it makes me, it makes me so happy. I mean, when people, you know, every time I get a comment that like, you are, you know, you're the best Deadpool. I mean, I'm sure they tell everyone that, but they, you know, you're the best Deadpool. You sound just like Ryan Reynolds when you're in your mask. You act just like him. Um, so t- to hear that and to know that, like, that me doing something that makes me happy and having fun with it also brings other people joy in it, you know, and, and people are able to come in and be like, hey, I got to see Deadpool. Like, you just associated me with one of the most, like, one of the most well known and you know, comic book characters and, you know, movies out there. And so that's, 
it's it's just up, it makes you want to do it more and that's that's what made me want to get the high quality suit it wasn't the fact that i just wanted the high quality suit it's like hey if people really are going to give me these kind of compliments why not give them something more in return you know if these people are going to say you're the best you act you know you have the Deadpool persona you have his attitude you have his demeanor if i want to do that why not give them like i said just give them more why not be deadpool why not do as much as i can to be that character oh you've done it for me i mean I, i've come up to you and i had no idea that you were underneath that mask underneath that cow if you will and you know it just it, you've done it to me i've said who who is that and I, I think I've, I've given you that 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 question who is that you did not break man wade wilson you know dp uh, the guy, you know, you call me what you want. <laughs> yep. Oh man, it's I, just, I appreciate it. And I, no, and I mean, and that's and that's and that's one thing I love. Like it's and that's because it's it's a challenge to me to not break character. Yes. <clears throat> yes. To, and you know, my my friends know how to do it. My like I said, my friends in the cosplay community well know how to come up and get me to break or say something to me that they know I'll you know I'll comment on um, personally, but uh. But one thing I will not do, I refuse to, I will not break for children. Right, right. As much as, as much as Deadpool is, you know, and as much as I used to be confused about why kids knew who Deadpool was. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he is more of an adult-centered character. He is. Um, but learning that he was on the Spider-Man TV series, I guess he was in a few episodes. Um, so learning that, learning that he has been introduced to the children, you know, in a certain way, I, I, I refuse to break for kids. I, I have um, to, even if my friends are around being silly, being goofy, I, I cannot. I refuse. I have heard there's a relationship between Deadpool and Spider Man, and I know that I've seen them in pictures together. Uh, you know, you say he was on the the uh, the TV show the with Disney him. XD. Yeah, the the Disney XD show, the Disney XD Spider Man show. He was on it. Well, tell me what, what is their relationship? Because I I know that if you look at their costumes real quick, they could get confused for one another. If you're you know, maybe I've, squinting. I've gotten, I've gotten called Spider Man so many times in my in my suit that it's not even funny. Yeah, that's not funny because they're uh, completely obvi- obviously different well, characters. It's an, it's an it's an unknowing, you know, an unknown mom or grandma who's just walking a little kid. And he goes, "Grandma, who's that? Mom, who's that?" And they're like, "Oh, that's Spider Man," and just keep walking. You know what? You're gonna say, um, "Yeah, I am Spider Man." <laughs> How about that? I did. I threw that. I was like, I'm a fantastic Spider-Man. Um, now, when I'm wearing my Spidey pool, when I'm wearing my Spidey pool cosplay, I understand that confusion. Mashups, I love mashups. Tell me about yeah. Spidey pool. <clears throat> oh man, it's it's uh, it's Spider-Man based, uh, but it's a black and it's a black and red suit um, with the you know it's got the Spider-Man mask with the Deadpool eyes, um, and then the logos where all Spider-Man's logos are. It's a it's a Deadpool. It's got Deadpool's eyes uh, splitting the spider in half <laughs> and then just kind of dripping down. I, I love it. It's one of my favorite costumes. I wish I could wear it more. Is this something you built yourself or something that, that was uh, commissioned or what happened? No, it's, um, it was commissioned. It's something I bought from a, it's just, it's just a like their spandex suit. It's something that I bought the, uh, I bought the pattern off of, off of a website. And then I gave it to, I gave the pattern to one of the companies that makes, that makes the uh, cosplay costumes. Yeah. And they made it for me. Well, you're talking about breaking characters. Uh, you know, when I go to these conventions and I'm not on stage doing the DJ thing, uh, I'll bring my portable podcasting equipment, my port- portable recorder, which is a microphone hooked up to my Zoom. And uh, and, and I'll go around and, and get people's information and, and, you know, let the people have a little, uh, you know, be a part of a, uh, you know, let them tell tell people how, how to get a hold of them and 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 the people that don't break character i remember the arkansas iron man i i was i got him on the podcast but he refused to take off the helmet so i had to, uh, to oh do, my god to do him through the helmet then before i got uh stacy and and matt on the podcast i think at one point he was dressed like a power ranger and he refused to take the mask off uh, i had to interview him kind of jam the the microphone up in under his uh, under his mask so it was kind of muffled a little bit but i i fixed it in post i was able to raise the levels but these are people that are really into it do not want to break character and i appreciate that so much but i probably and with hindsight i should have taken them off in a corner and maybe got a little bit you know more in depth i give them little five minute I- interviews to, to just to get the people yeah give the people an idea of who was there at this convention and and who supported and how you can support them in the future. 
you know, and I, man, I, I, I've had, I'm having a good time with you, Jordan. You know, you're, you're getting into your life and tell me, oh, tell me about the, the new girl, uh, the, the new relationship. Is she, how, what does she think about all this cosplaying? Uh, um, are you into comic books? She, uh, no, she, uh, she's, she's a, she's a sub nerd. Uh, she, uh, she's not, she's not full fledged into it. And she, she even told me, she goes, you know, I'll go, she goes, I'll go to a couple of event conventions. She goes, but don't expect me to dive into it like you do. Um, which isn't, it's not a bad thing because I mean, it gives me my own thing. Um, you know, uh, but, uh, she, she loves it. She adores it. She actually tries to help with it. Um, I just, <laughs> with all this quarantine stuff going on, I actually started a TikTok. I was like, why not? Everyone else is doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and she's, she, she's been so cute with it. She'll send me videos every day. She's like, you need to do this. Deadpool needs to do this. Deadpool needs to, you know, Deadpool should do this. I say, why aren't you making a video? You need to make a video today. Why did you make a video yesterday? She, so she's been, she's definitely, she's got my back. She's very supportive. Um, even if it's not her thing, she's going to support me a hundred percent and she's gonna, she's going to make sure that if I want to do it, that I do it right. She's, and that's, that's one of my favorite things about her is she's not going to let me do anything halfway. No, that's definitely what you need. You have, you have an inspiration. I have one of those myself, you know, she'll watch the movies with me, but she won't come to a comic con. She won't come dress up. No, that's not her. And she, you know, she doesn't listen to my podcast, but she helped me to design my podcast studio. She said, Oh, you oh need, that's great. You, you need a table like this. And, and uh, you need to, to set your stuff up like this. And on Saturday, I'm going to do a, a live podcast. A, a first time I've ever done Facebook Live. And she she said, you need to have this in the background. And you need to do this. So it's good to have somebody that supports you in what you do, whether they want to be a, a part of it. Like, uh, well, like the Warnocks definitely are a family team. Uh, and, and even the Arkansas Iron Man, for that matter. He's got his pepper pots that uh, that helps him out and even takes pictures for him. But uh, I, I'm, yeah, I see that you she, have. She's a trooper. Yeah, you have that. You have a, a relationship that she is going to be your support in this endeavor because she sees that it makes you happy. And, and in, in turn, that's going to make her happy and everybody happy. And, and, and that's what we need to do hey, on a broader spectrum, on a broader sense in, in the world. Just make each other happy. Help each other out there. Rant. <laughs> it's, it's easy. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's easier than you think. People complicate it. People complicate it so much. Absolutely, man. And, uh, g- you know, get to a convention. If you have any uh, thought of, uh, you know, any any like or desire uh, of this, uh, you know, of, of watching the movies or reading a comic book or, or watching a, a cartoon or, man, just, oh, you know what? Go to a convention. See what it's like and, and meet people that, oh, there's other people that like this stuff and, and that are really yep. into this stuff. Some of them are really, really into this stuff. And, you know, and, and you, you know, you find your tribe, you find your, your, your gathering. When was the first, the first convention was the, was the Comic-Con way that you did? And, and how often do you go to uh, conventions um, a year since then? Um, it's honestly, I will go to every single convention in Arkansas that I can. Um, and that with, I can is completely parallel with me having my kids. Okay. Um, so if I have my kids, I will not do Deadpool. I will not do Deadpool with my kids. That's just because the fact that I don't like to break character. Right. It makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable to have them around. Well, I mean, it makes it smart. And, um, and would you go to a convention with the kids outside of costume? Maybe wearing your oh, Pikachu I, oh, hat? Yeah, I've taken, I've taken my daughter. Um, I've taken her. She's dressed up as Wonder Woman before when she was six. Right. Um, I, I've taken her dressed up. Uh, my I, my son, I've taken him, but he was a baby, so he didn't realize what was going on. But I haven't got a chance to actually take them, um, you know, like I said, outside of character. I um, mean, that's, that's another thing that's great about, you know, the relationship I'm in now. And she told me, she goes, I know you don't want to do cosplay with your kids around. She goes, but we can go to the convention. We'll go do our own thing, and you do your Deadpool thing. So that, that's another one of those support things that's great. How sweet is um, that? And just with just with everything, just with everything going on, I haven't been able to make any conventions. Oh, I don't think there's anything going on out there. I mean, in the beginning yeah. of this uh, thing, when I do the intros, you know, I've been saying. Usually, I tell people what shows, uh, you know, public shows. If I'm doing a karaoke show out there, or if there's any conventions happening, you know, whatever I'm doing that week or that weekend. But uh, lately, it's been very blue. <laughs> there are hey, no man. public shows. 
There are no private shows. There's only coronavirus pandemic. Ew. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm doing private shows, but that that's on the, the website. Uh, frowned uh, upon by most he's people. He's a private dancer, a dancer <laughs> for money. <laughs> so I, you're able to do your job from home, so you haven't had to to uh, really. Your life hasn't hasn't changed that much. In, in uh, um, go ahead. Not really. Um, I mean, I, I do. I've I've went to a hospital. I went to a hospital probably two times since all of this started. So in the last month and a half, I went to maybe two different hospitals um, because I mean, they're not using surgical robotic systems enough for them to break, um, you know, with everything going on. So they're not doing as many surgeries. So, um, so I'm, I'm able to do all of my administration stuff and conference calls and stuff like that from home. So it's, it's, it's made it boring because I'm, I'm an active person. Um, I go, I have a group of buddies who play basketball a couple times a week. Uh, you know, I'm in a softball league. I'm, I'm trying to stay active. I like to go out and hike. I like to just take my kids to the park. And it's, that's where it's really hindered. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, keep, definitely keep active and keep, keep doing what you're doing. Doing the, you know, little videos or, or something with you in character. It keeps, keeps you sane, I hope, and, and keeps you in the public eye as well. And I guess as we round this thing out, how do people get a hold of you, uh, Jordan, the Arkansas Deadpool, Wade Wilson, if you will? Um, well, I'm I'm on I'm on Instagram. Um, I like that. I just started a TikTok, and there's only like two videos on there. Um, but the best way to get a hold of me is, is Instagram. Um, I don't have a Facebook. Um, that's pretty much the only social media that I do. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I know with every, with Deadpool and everything, that's, that's just what I have to do. Um, so they can message me on there. I will talk. I will talk cosplay. I'll talk anything all day. I'm a talker. I, I love to speak to people about their passions, about their desires. You know, I don't know how many people I've talked to, just close friends that I didn't even know liked cosplay and liked comic books. But as soon as they found out I was, you know, Arkansas Deadpool, they're like, hey, what do you think about me doing this? And I'll talk to them all day long. Um, do you build cosplays so, at all or, or you, you kind of uh, tweak out the, the commissioned ones? I t- I'll tweak the commissioned ones, um, and I'll do little things here and there. I have a, I know it doesn't have anything to do with Deadpool, but I have an Aquaman. I have a Green Lantern that I'm working on. Cool. Um, so I do, I do little things. I'll buy, I'll buy the commissioned ones and I'll, I'll alter them a little bit. I'm not as talented as most of the people that I'm friends with who can make this stuff from scratch. Oh, not me. Um, not me. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, Queen Koopa, Jade Creation. Oh, like, fantastic. They, just watching Watching, watching them make their stuff from scratch, it just it it amazes me. Yeah, the, the, those are people um, that I've, I've I've been able to get little sound bites at different conventions, and it amazes me the the work that they put into these cosplays. It's just it, whenever I go to the cos conventions, that's what I look for. Uh, you know, not necessarily the comic books or the little trinkets. Every once in a while, here and there, I'll find something that catches my eye. But the people that are all dressed up and that put in all this effort, including you, my friend. I mean, you say that that for the most part, it's a uh, it's store bought. But you, just you, becoming the character, it, it's it's something to see. It really is. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> the pleasure's all on this side. And I guess as we round no, this thing, no, up, I, I uh, promise you, it's not. Hey, <laughs> that, that was Deadpool, folks. He's in there. Uh, think what you will. Uh, now, uh, what I, I do want, and I'm going to put that out into the, this into the universe, uh, since you did mention Deadpool's wedding, uh, your significant other needs to be Shikla. There. I put it out in the universe. I mean, I bet I could get her to do it once. Ah, one time. Looking forward to it. If not, if not, if not, I know... Uh, I know a couple of people that do really good. I know one person that does a really good copycat. I mean, we could get some amazing pictures and make things happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing you at the next few conventions uh, as soon as we can make our way out into the world. Now I do see an end to this pandemic. Uh, China was in uh, quarantine in, on January 23rd. I think just last week they started to break out into their uh, opening up their businesses little by little. So Maybe about three months. That's that's what it uh, what it takes. And I think we went into quarantine about March twenty third, and uh, so April, May, June, maybe the middle of June, maybe the end of June. I, I think what, what the president is saying right now is May first is the goal. And, and, and as opposed to to what he said, April twelfth, which was Easter, you know, and all the scientists and his advisors said, no, 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 Mister President, no, no, and he had to backpedal a little yeah. bit. 
So May 1st, and I think all the scientists are kind of, okay, yeah, we can go with that. May 1st, let's all go out, have some fun. Uh, and I do want you to, I, I do want to see you at a grocery store wearing your Deadpool uh, mask and, and, uh, and, and grocery shopping. Got wrong. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> well, all right, my man. I mean, as we round this thing out, I usually I end them with uh, last words for the people. Jordan, uh, Wade Wilson, DP, the Arkansas Deadpool. Find him on Instagram, Arkansas Wade Wilson. Yeah, you could, uh, Arkansas Deadpool, you can uh, give me words to live by, something that you grew up on, or just something that pops into your head at this particular moment in time. Uh, last words for the people, Jordan, Arkansas Deadpool. Just, I mean, just give it a hundred percent, do be happy. I mean, it goes, it goes back to the reason it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about the whole equality thing. Like, be happy. Like it's, 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 it's hard, but it's not as hard as you think. Love yourself, learn about yourself. Personal growth is everything. And just be happy, be happy and do what you love. Now, now is the perfect time with all the pandemic and everything going on. Spend this time with yourself to learn yourself and do what you love. Find things you love. Just be happy. Well, there you have it, party people. Jordan, the Arkansas Deadpool. Find him on Instagram and now on TikTok. Man, just such a good time talking to that young man. And I, I say young man because I'm an old fart. <laughs> 50 years old and I turned into an old fart. I say old fart, but hey, I, I'm still walking and talking like Macaulay Calkin. No big deal. And, you know, and I know we're going to make it through this pandemic. For sure. I had a good time talking to the Arkansas Deadpool. That man is making smiles and, and just uh, keeping himself happy and his girl and his, and his kids. That's so sweet. The man had a story and he served in the military. So thank you for your service and all that. I, I wish we didn't have to have a military. I wish those people w would be re um, distributed into world uh, helpers. You know, if somebody needs help around the world, you send uh, what would be called the, the Navy, the, the military. It doesn't have to be armed forces. It's just, you know, forces of good people that go around helping. And I know that that's part of the job is when you, you go to these uh, places that are having conflict and we try to go in there and help and not just, you know, it's not about killing people. It's about helping people as well, you know, making sure that, Hey, what is, what is this struggle? It, like, uh, you know, if two kids are fighting in the school, in the schoolyard, the teacher comes in and says, uh, hey, what's all this? Uh, you know, wh what's the problem here? Why are you fighting? Yeah, let let's see if we can resolve this issue. Hopefully we get to resolve these issues all over the world. That's my little political rant. Not, you know, and I, I'm, <laughs> I, I know I can't be the only one in this big, uh, big blue globe of ours, big ball that we're living on hurtling through space that, that doesn't like war. My goodness. <laughs> If everybody just figured out, oh, oh, wait, why are we fighting? You, you don't like war? I don't like war? Why are we fighting? Oh, you, you needed some of these resources? Oh, okay. Well, what resources do you have that, that I need? Oh, well, all right. Let's, uh, let's see if we can exchange this. And uh, yeah, say no to war. Let's, uh, let's all do some, some cosplaying and have some fun. Uh, that's what this world needs. More fun, more love. And I think that's what Deadpool is about. <laughs> it's giving people love. Uh, in many various strange ways, <laughs> he's got a love for lots of different things, man. And the, the character, the character, and and maybe Jordan, the person as well. He's got love for different things as as well. <laughs> and whatever you're into, hey, you'll get you're gonna find your tribe out there on the internet. I'm sure of it. I'm so sure of it. The internet has made us all more of a community and with this social media. You know, I. I you know, I try to put my, my best face out there like like uh, most people do whenever they're posting stuff on social media. They'll they'll put their their pictures when they were having a good time and they'll try to stay away from when things weren't so good. They won't post any of that stuff. So your face on on uh, social media is is the best face forward. And, and I know when I do these podcasts, I, I leave them as real as I possibly can. They're good conversations, man. And life is real. Uh, you, you know, I, I leave it as raw as I possibly can. Maybe I'll cut some breaths out here and there, and, but uh, for the most part, it, you you get it raw. 
And uh, speaking of people telling their stories, that was a terrible transition. If you want to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call at 501-470-6386 or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan (laughs) with radiowhat.com. DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. If you like what you hear, follow What Makes You Famous social media. Use the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Follow on Facebook at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Instagram at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Twitter at Makes Famous. And follow on YouTube at Keys Dan. Leave What Makes You Famous podcast a review and subscribe. Listen to What Makes You Famous podcast on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, and almost anywhere you find podcasts. Tell your story on my podcast, What Makes You Famous. Call 501-470-6386 and leave a message to set up a time. You can support What Makes You Famous using the PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash keys dan email info at radio what.com what makes you famous podcast is a production of keys dan enterprises incorporated at keys dan.com thank you for listening radio what the music you want with some great, great quotes the price one pays for pursuing any profession or calling is an intimate knowledge of its ugly side james baldwin the music you want Radio What's.com. Tweet, tweet, yo. Follow Radio What's on Twitter at Radio What Twit. Tweet, tweet, yo.